So I was reading this book the other day, and I came to Nikki Giovanni really late in life, like, you know, last week. No, I've read some of her poems, but like I got this out of the library. And I was like, damn girl, why do I even bother? So I found this piece, and the piece I'm gonna do after this is like, if I were a good writer, I would have written the piece I'm about to do in this many words, but instead I had to take three minutes. Um, <laughs> so this is called Revolutionary Dreams. It's by Nikki Giovanni. I used to dream militant dreams of taking over America to show these white folks how it should be done. I used to dream radical dreams of blowing everyone away with my perceptive powers of correct analysis. I even used to think I'd be the one to stop the riot and negotiate the peace. Then I awoke and dug that if I dream natural dreams of being a natural woman, doing what a, nat what a woman does when she's natural, I would have a revolution. This is a poem about revolution, about the need for speed. Swifty actions defined by momentary passions, perpetual orbits, they got no bus stops, because what goes around goes around and round, ever so gradually slowing down with the universal tendency. So revolution comes rhythmically, goes and comes again without really changing anything. Radical notions, playthings of media moguls, bringing about no lasting salvations. Revolution is just standing in the middle of a clock face, not knowing if six be nine, smack dab in it, wondering what time it is. This is a call for evolution, gradual change over time, because in my mind I can't identify a bloody uprightest thing that made any kind of permanent refinements. In Fidel's Cuba, electricity and water are at best a guess. 1776ers now inhabit the same imperial ships they were just too hip for. Traded tea for oil, water for sky. Grab their own soil at the expense of others who now casino owners start their own rise to power. Because in the revolutionary game, new power generation always lays claim to the spoils of greatness they chose to defame. So, it keeps coming around in a poem called Time, which is really all about revolution, which is not like the earthquake it's cracked up to be, more like a player booty calling round the way honeys, but really, just synonymous with our orbit around the sun. Momentous motion beyond human notions of causality, but watching you will see how time slow dance steals world records from revolutions whirling dervishes, like time was the tortoise and revolution the hare. Because I'd rather share in civil rights marches step by progressive step. Rather embrace ways and means of Elizabeth Cady Stanton and suffragettes. Rather have a velvet revolution like the Czechs. Transition smooth as silk. And why not elect a poet as president? So, like Mary J, I'm saying no more drama. It's time to evolve into an existence cooler, wiser, and calmer, creating actions born of love, not violence and anger, paving the way for sane, safe strength. Because evolution, to me, feels like a woman place, like the sound a fertile womb makes when no one is listening. And in this poem about revolution, the evolution devolves on us, so take the mic like you take responsibility for your own life. Turn it into a talking stick, respectfully listening and gratefully speaking impeccable words you'd be proud to own ten years down this road. Foster decisions that will benefit seven generations, yes. These concepts come from our native nations whose spirits live on in the dirt that we tread, their bodies kill, but their knowledge not dead. True meaning of revolution? Endless cipher rhythm dance that sweeps you into its momentum, whether you bring grace or ineptitude. So you can embrace love or you can get taken by hatred. You can get to know God or you can kill for what's called sacred. Weighty are the options cropping up around you now, the only time that can possibly learn you, whether you rough ride rage to soak in petrol for the sins of a culture with no virtue or teach tolerance to vultures who one day might murder you. Each of you has leadership innately in chakras. You can open them up or you can keep them in darkness, but trust that the thrust of the Earth's crust spins on with or without you. This is a poem about revolution, the old kind and the new, the kind that severs appendages, leaving a nation's men footless and handless, or the kind that treads the tiniest steps so as not to take the life of even one insect. This is a poem about revolutions, the kinds that sweep you up or the kinds that you choose. How you guys doing? I'm gonna do one more. I'm just vamping because I haven't picked it yet. <laughs> do you guys, you wanna hear something like happier or something? No. 
No happier? Okay. Okay. Then this is my new favorite piece. And it really doesn't make any sense, except I think it does. It's apropos of nothing and everything all at the same time. And in, in and within it is my vote for best picture. Um, but you have to find it. <laughs> Wanna take all the change fallen out of pockets of boys visiting my couch or frequenting my mattress, collect it and buy a house. Now, it won't be a home, but it will be some place to put my chair that's just a chair. You've been gone four months and I'm still finding your hair everywhere in all its iterations from orange to bleach to long and hippie-like and isn't it all about residue? The kind that you face and the kind you run from without grace. Residual traces of life slaps in the face, bringing grudges about race and races who wins and who doesn't like territorial pissing contests over two by four pieces of raised plywood, taking peaceful poets to places reserved for hawkish warlords. If you want to spit activism, then stop acting and start taking some action. Stop preaching and start practicing. Because last time I checked, you had your karma on pause, and the week before that, y'all came in wearing it backwards. So know this. Words follow deeds, thoughts predate speech, and humanity flows secretly even in your most despised enemy. So get with the program of digging out hypocrisy like weeds and planting purposeful, precious seeds of futures nonviolent, loving, and ecstatic. In your minds, you got me keeping up with the Joneses, but in reality, I'm just trying to keep up with the dishes in the sink and the bill collectors on the phone. Don't know that I'll ever feel grown, and that house may never be a home. More like a shell I wear on my back as I travel across lands with an abundance of lack, living my life on the pole strip to the minimum, because who needs accoutrements when you focus on what's within? I've taken a vow of poverty and one of chastity. Don't put anything into my body I haven't already taken into my soul. That's why most times you see me, I'll be rolling solo, wondering if I'll ever get back to my hobbit hole in my old car. She's been repoed. So all I got left are these bare feet, but that's okay with me, see? Because fighting evil is done very, very slowly. So I gave up rolling with the homies. Drive too fast, might put the wrong shit on blast. Instead, I practice my warrior poses, make sure the life I'm living is the one I've chosen, finding my balance, strengthening my inner core, and after three ohms, my battle chant is, let's go kill some orcs. But first, I turn that elven blade on myself because the heart of darkness, it beats in every chest and massacre hurts, he done been dead. But the real horror is it's all just a test, a simple question of what's your manifesto, baby? Can you rip the dark right out of you and let the sun shine in? Can you wrestle with an angel without letting the devil win? Can you fill the abyss with joy and turn it up to 11? Shit, I live in the belly of the beast. What's your address? 